Hello again everyone, Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Thanks for joining me once again. Um, just finished up a really great project. Uh, it's a 70 second scale Russian Alpha submarine uh, for RC control. I uh, thought I would let you take a look at it and see what you think. This particular hull kit uh, was actually produced by a gentleman by the name of Tim Cobb and actually he did a really good job. Um, details are, are nice and crisp, well scribed um, and the layup was really nice. It's an epoxy uh, you know, fiberglass layup, nice and thin, uh, easy to work with uh, and it just builds into just a, you know, a beautiful little model. So, you know, starting on the on the hull and talking about the hull, one of the challenges that I had when we first got this project from the previous owner was the was the hull split. Um, I really don't like it. You know, this is is right in the middle of the boat. It's it's kind of visible. Um, it, it's not too bad though. Typically, what I like to see is you know a center line split uh, that wraps all the way around below the water line, so you can't see that. Uh, so this is the you know the split that had come with it, and the other one was actually back here. Uh, so what I needed to do was was actually extend this uh, towards the back, and you can see this is a you know uh, a little bit cleaner uh, of a seam back here. Uh, I used a razor saw to put that in, and you can't see where I had joined the hull back there. Just makes you know putting in the the cylinder a lot easier, uh, so you don't have to slip it in, wedge it in, and try and make all the connections uh, in the back. But uh, like I said, just a, a beautiful little model, nice size, uh, 70 second scale. Um, this is a, a non, um, you know, authentic, uh, it's not the proper scale. This is a, a six bladed scimitar prop and it should be a five bladed, uh, you know, more round propeller to be to scale. But, uh, you know, the owner elected to go with this one because it was in stock here and ready to go. Uh, a little bit more cost effective and it's easy to swap out uh, really easy to swap out it would probably take you know all of three and a half minutes to, to swap that out if it ever really really bothered him um, moving to the propulsion aspect of the boat now this is a uh, an older used d and &E miniatures watertight cylinder there's absolutely nothing wrong with it um, you know obviously just looks a little bit dated but uh, absolutely fully functional. The neat thing about these older ones is actually they had adjustable ballast tanks and the idea behind this was that you would be able to transfer the cylinder between models and each model requires a different size of ballast tank uh, to be optimized for it. So the idea is you can mark out the size of your ballast tanks and use this crank to adjust the size of it. Now obviously that's not going to happen um, you know, in this particular case but you know, it's just kind of a neat feature of it. So it's a gas style ballast system that uses airbrush propellant uh, and the way this works uh, and some of you will have seen this before you got a servo inside there that operates this um, lever and that lever is a, a two function deal. First if you pushes forward opens up the vent in the top of the tank uh, air escapes water fills it and the model submerges when it pulls it depresses the plunger of that Schrader valve that you can just see in there. Um, liquid air is expelled into the tank, dispelling, uh, or sorry, displacing water. Water is forced out through these holes in the bottom of the tank and the model surfaces. So I've got a, a really nice speed controller in there. I got that from Engel out of Germany. I've um, got three servos. Only two of them are used, one for rudder, one for pitch control, uh, a receiver and main drive motor. Uh, got a reduction gearbox in here, I believe that's three to one. And these are the old kind of solid state cup seals uh, that d &E used to use. I, I love them, they're very low friction, they work exceptionally well. This is an old cylinder, uh, it's been sitting for a long time, but these still function perfectly when I tested it, that's just great. So the other challenge is to uh, put the, the battery in there, and this is the solution I came up with, and it's a little mini cylinder. 
that I created. Um, made my own end caps with my 3D printer. Put some terminals on here uh, with a waterproof connector, and that's available uh, in your auto parts store. Lots of variations of this. I like these ones, they're nice and easy to put on and off. This is a lithium polymer. Uh, 6400 milliamp hour battery, so 6.4 amps. It's going to have lots and lots and lots of juice uh, for the owner. He shouldn't really have to, to charge this up again. The neat thing um, that I like about this though is actually the mounting of it because it's going to go in the bow of the boat. Um, you know, you can't really put fasteners in there and you don't want to just kind of wedge it in there. So, what I actually used are magnets. Uh, rare earth magnets and it just snaps in place and I'll show that to you uh, here in a moment when we get the cylinder installed into the boat. Okay now we've got the trickiest part of the whole build process coming up right now and that's going to be me trying to film um, you know the installation of the cylinder while using one hand and filming with the other but let's see what you know we can do. Um, Again, some really neat detail up on the on the top there. We got some thin brass sheet, uh, you know, doors. Um, this whole center section just lifts out. These are the internal uh, workings of the boat. You can see some flotation foam uh, in the back there. The rear waterproof connector. Uh, got a universal shaft going to our propeller, and again, super free rolling. That's really, really important. I can't overemphasize how important it is for non-binding linkages uh, in these models. You do not want to have your servos fighting to control your boat. So everything needs to move very, very well. It'll just make for a nice smoother operation and longer time at the pond without having to recharge your battery. This is uh, ballast and the, the way that I did that is uh, when I was ballasting the boat I just used uh, lead pellets and I put them in a in a baggie, a Ziploc bag, adding it um, you know until I got the proper ballast weight and then once that was all set I sealed it up in the bag, added some epoxy um, and then once it cured I got a you know a nice contoured um, ballast chunk that can be uh, removed in the future if needed. Um, but it, it fits into little nooks and crannies, uh, you know, really easily uh, in this particular case between two large lead uh, poles that I put in there. Um, and then you've got the lead shot. So, you know, looking forward into the bow, we can see control of the bow planes here. That's a magnetic linkage. And here's the magnetic coupler for the battery compartment. We can put that in right now. So this just slips in just like this and if you listen you'll hear it click into place so that is locked down right now I think I can actually it takes a lot of force to break that free um, so it works really well I'm really happy with that so this has got the main battery lead that goes from the battery compartment to the rear of the boat to connect to the main cylinder which is right here. Now this part I'm not going to be able to do, but what, what, what would typically happen is you'd slip that dog bone connector into the uh, output shaft of the cylinder. Um, but this basically just drops in place. You can see I've adhered two brass uh, flanges on the side of the cylinder. <clears throat> and then to secure it, you just simply use these uh, stainless steel set screws, one on each side, and that locks it down. These are the uh, linkages. We got the dive plane control right here. Um, those are ball connectors. They just snap in place just like that. And this is the rudder control, which likewise um, snaps in place. Can't do that with one hand. And you'll see what I've got here is a uh, connector that leads along the side of the cylinder up into the front and magnetic coupler locked in place. So now our front dive planes uh, are connected to the rear stern planes uh, and everything is all running off of automatic pitch control that can be overridden by input from the transmitter. 
So this uh, is basically ready to go. I have not yet uh, put it in a pond. Uh, it's been in the pool for trimming, but it has not been in the pond. So we got a maiden voyage coming up here in a few hours once the sun comes up. Um, we'll see how that does. If you take a look at the back here, we got some really small control surfaces uh, and they're in front of the prop, which means the only way you're gonna get um, input from those uh, planes and, and rudders is when you're at speed, which makes actually control of the boat at low speeds um, somewhat problematic, but just like the real boats, um, you know, you need to have a nice big ocean to play with uh, and precise control is not so important. So this is where we're at right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this thing in the water and seeing what it can do. Um, we'll take a look at it right now.